Michael, Cheryl, we've got some great books to get through today. Tell us, what have you been reading? Uh, I've been reading the sequel to Hilary Mantel's 2009 Man Booker Prize winning book, Wolf Hall, Bring Up the Bodies. It picks up exactly where uh, Wolf Hall left off. It is the uh, dying days of summer in 1535. We're at Wolf Hall. Uh, Henry VIII, married to Anne Boleyn, they have a daughter, Elizabeth, and Henry's eye has already settled on Jane Seymour. It is about the lead up, the trial, and execution of Anne Boleyn. Mm. But really, it's, it's about, about Crom Thomas. Thomas Cromwell. Mm. I loved it. Mm. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I can see that you're not. Can you just wait a second. <laughs> Look, I think one of the things about this is. The it's writing... unreadable. <laughs> no, it's not unreadable. <laughs> the writing style, you pair it back. You take away the, the metaphors, you, ta you take away your adjectives, your adverbs, you kind of, you know, keep it clean. That's but you, no, you, just, you walk wrestling. away, but just with just a whole lot of facts. I mean, it was to me just oh, like reading no. history notes. Absolutely not. I couldn't get through it. I didn't find no. it that interesting, you Cheryl. Oh, oh, you didn't. Didn't. <laughs> Look, I, I'm one of the people who I, 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 I didn't get Wolf Hall. I struggled with yeah. it. Admittedly, it's a period of history I'm not terribly yeah. interested in. Mm. Um, but I think it's a period of history we all know the story of. And I kept on asking myself, what does she bring to it that oh. we don't? actually already know. A, it's the psychological uh, portrait of Thomas Cromwell, yeah. an incredibly interesting man, how he manipulates the situation, manipulates the politics, the sexual politics. One of the big things also about it is that I found it really immediate. Mm. I mean, the intrigue of it all, it mm. just, that it came alive for me. And I found it so refreshing that I had writing that I could, you know, get my teeth into, like, you know, like having a you know, a glass of a, a big, a big oh. red. You know, <laughs> with complex overtones. A big undrinkable red. <laughs> oh no, no, no! Wolf Hall is the most popular Man Booker Prize winning book. Popular ever. in terms of sales. In terms of sales. Wow! Yeah. At the end of last year, HBO and BBC announced a co-production on a miniseries for Wolf Hall. Mm. Uh, mm. Bring up the bodies is already a bestseller right around the world. Uh, yeah. It's well, I'll it's wait great. for the TV show. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Books are actually in the business of communicating ideas and feelings and thoughts and emotions. And if you're not communicating, then you're failing. Honestly, I couldn't tell you which books won prizes and which ones didn't. I got a kind of a bit of a circle going with my friends, people that I trust, people that trust me. If they say that they've read a book and they like it, then I'll probably give it a go. Well, look, from one award-winning book to another one, this is a, a new Australian novel. Uh, it recently won the Australian Vogel Literary Award, which is um, an award for an unpublished novel by an author under 35, Eleven Seasons by Paul D. Carter. A fantastic debut novel. Mm, I um, totally agree. It's the story yeah. of a, a young man um, who dreams of one day playing for the Hawthorne Football Club and uh, it's a, a classic Vogel in that it's a coming-of-age novel. It's, it, it follows him from age 12 into his early 20s as he literally grows up um, in and around um, AFL um, and uh, tries to become a man. His entire life uh, revolves around his dream of being a, a professional footballer. His mum is a night nurse, a shift worker. His dad is nowhere to be seen. As we watch him grow up, his things get more complicated. Um, he, he, he begins to wonder where his dad is, um, why his mother never comes to a football match. Um, you see him have his first cigarette, his first drink. What Carter does is captures the, the complexity of being a, a, a young adolescent male very, very well. As other people have said, this doesn't miss a beat. I, I thought from the start I to really the finish, enjoyed it, it got more and more, it. more and more tense, more and more complicated. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's brutal and, and it's kind of like, I was worried. I thought it was going to be a locky boy book. And I thought, I am not going to <laughs> no, enjoy no, no. this. Well, it, it wasn't. No, no, it wasn't. And I thought, football, boys, coming of age, it's not for me. But, do you know, it was for me. I it's really, it. I enjoyed it. You he, don't need to know anything about no, football. That's no. not the point. It's no. not a sport book. No, you know, it's not a sport um, book. But the cultural context is the yes. about the love of sport yeah and the sort of the masculine culture around that the craft was great oh he's a his storyteller he's a very very good storyteller he is he's got great clarity in the writing mm. i didn't find it the situation terribly complex 
No, but it's no. Yeah. but it's it's real and it's yeah. it, it's normal and it's something yeah. that people and can it, identify with. Well, uh, whereas, <laughs> whereas you know, yeah, the court of King real Henry, people. who yeah. Yeah. Is, but the thing is, that sort of growing up is uh, uh, sort of is not is not part of my existence because right. I'm not that kind of sporty. Kind oh of no, guy. neither am I. But I mean, and the, I, the but, story of uh, the coming of age story and the story of his relationship with his parents and his, mm. it, it, to me, it really hit a chord. I, I think that it, it was about people and it was yeah. about relationships. I was with that young I mean, man all the way. He yeah. broke my heart. I mean, oh. so vulnerable. The author is a is a is a teacher. I believe um, mm. t a teacher of young mm. men. You can tell he mm. knows, mm. He knows adolescence yeah. inside and out. In Jason's case, searching for a father figure. Mm. In the absence of his own father, he mm. finds, you know, coaches or and, and friends and and trying to find out, you know, how to be a man in the absence of mm. someone to show him yes. how to be a man. And th those are the kinds of stories yeah. that I'm interested in. I couldn't tell you what makes a prize-winning book because the ones that win prizes for me, in my personal mind, are so different to the ones that are actually winning the prizes. It has to be fearless, it has to be original, and it has to be thought-provoking. It just has to be a great story, great characters that engages the reader, and not just engages one demographic, but crosses over several demographics. Yeah. Talking about prize-winning authors, Tom Keneally, I mean, it's a plethora of prizes, but Miles Franklin, um, and a Booker Prize winner. He has written this fiction book called uh, The Daughters of Mars. Um, I loved it on so many levels. Let me tell you what it's about first. It's set in the First World War, in the Great War, um, and it's about these two um, nurses. This is kind of a female perspective about war. I mean, you know, Tom has written many accounts of war, both fiction and non-fiction, but here we see it from the nurses' perspectives. These two sisters have a big secret. They have to deal with an incident that is quite tragic, and I won't give that away, and then they decide to enlist and become war nurses. He's conversational in his style. He writes beautifully. He's yes. almost poetic in parts. It's easy to read. Mm. Michael Parkinson told me once that he thought that Tom Keneally was one of the greatest writers of all time. Not just one of the greatest Australian writers, but one of the greatest writers of all time. I tell you, for, for, for me, um, I'm not really interested in war stories. No. Particularly, uh, Australia has this, you know, mythologising yeah. of, of war, and I, and I really me come too. to that me kind too. of thing with a lot of hesitation. But the war almost happens off off camera, mm -hmm. as it were, you know, yeah. the, the, the... Apart from some very graphic learning. kind of... But, of course, learning, but yeah. the two sisters are, are, are on the hospital yeah. ship. Gallipoli's yeah. happening just over just the horizon. Over there, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yet they are dealing with the horror, the yeah. broken bones. Yeah. Do you know, and often the... we talk about male mateship and, you know, the... Yeah. And, and, you don't get the female perspective. And you don't get it. Yeah. And you got that with this. Absolutely. You got the yeah. mateship of the women. And that, to me, was quite unique. Tom Keneally history made personal and mm. intimate mm. because yeah. you know that that's, is that is perfect yeah. that is exactly that's what's, and he's yeah. great at that yeah. but it isn't the complex sort of situations and 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 sort of political kind of stuff that you have with with Mantell this is kind of story driven yeah rather than and and this is kind of character driven so you did yeah. like it michael I did love it. I oh, loved it. Love that. Oh, we I loved it. it. Yeah, we, we all agree. We all agree. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You know, you shouldn't have to have a literary degree in order to enjoy something that's won the Booker Prize. I think a prize-winning book is like a good wine. You often look at the cover and if it's got those beautiful gold stickers on it, it's obviously a good sign. Look, I agree. I think Me it's, too. Yeah, yeah, it's a mark of merit. It actually helps you choose a book. And, you know, I mean, most award-winning books actually increase in sales to some extent. Some yeah. by large, I think it, I think it can do. Yeah. Um, it, it probably depends on the prize. I because mean, each of the prizes have uh, a different character. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I mean, I know somebody who avoids the book of, like, the plague. Speaking yes. of um, good writers, with what's out this month, um, you know, Nobel Prize-winning author, Toni uh, Morrison, yes. her new book, yes. Home, lovely. Um, Mark Haddon, the author of Curious Incident, Incident of, of the, the Dog, Dog in the Nighttime. This is his new book, The Red House. And in light of my recent visit to Beirut, um, I picked up a book called Beirut 39, uh, new writing from the Arab world. Well worth reading. Really looking forward to all of those books. And to our next discussion. Mm. Happy reading. See you next time.